All right there, so I'm gonna try and do my best to explain how this works. You're gonna get a uh, big stack of cards here uh, that you're just gonna shuffle up. This game is a set collection game, kind of like Uno, and you get all sorts of different uh, train cards in here, each with different uh, point values on them. They give you this tray here to put cards in as a uh, draw pile, discard pile, and then this is where you're gonna play special disaster cards. So, uh, cards you get to, uh, what you're trying to do is make sets. So there are um, essentially like industrial train cards, uh, like this one here. And you get um, nine different kinds of here. So this is an auto carrier card and it has a potential of scoring you five points per card, uh, sort of. Uh, commuter cards for piggyback cards for gondola cards three coal cards three coil steel three hopper two tank two and a box car one so there's nine types of these um, industrial type of cards you have commuter rail cards uh, they all look the same they all have a one value point they just have different names so for example this one here is a mailbag card. You have a coach card, a dome card, sleeper, and observation. And these have a potential of scoring you their points, but you can double your scores multiple times with these cards, and I'll explain that in a moment. Uh, each card serves two purposes. It has two sides. It has the side of the... Um, card that's being pulled and the other side serves as your locomotive engine card. So in the game if I was going to build up a box car train I could play this down as my locomotive and I could start attaching box cars to this. And I cannot do something like this where I have two different kinds of cars attached. I can only attach the same type of car so I could only make a train full of box cars. Uh, additionally you get diesel cards and diesel cards can be exchanged for um, your locomotive cards so it could be that and then this card can go i believe it just goes back into your hand um, i never really saw anything in the rules that explain that specifically but there is a certain card in the deck that makes me feel that is what happens um, so that would allow me to get this card if i ended up starting building pink tank engine cards i could put this out and get this card into my hand to make another set or um, if i am building a commuter line and so my commuter line is something like this here where i have three different types of commuter rails and I have this locomotive at the front. If I replace the locomotive with a diesel car, it's going to allow me to double the score of my train. Uh, so that is diesel cards. I don't know if you need to have a minimum. Let's see, do you need to have a minimum of cards for that double bonus? Uh, diesel by substituting a diesel face up in the loco at the head of the engine passenger trains. No, it's just doubled. Okay. Uh, so those are those cards. You get a caboose card, which you can put at the end of the train. If you put this at the end of the train, um, you cannot build on it anymore. However, it does prevent it from certain types of attack cards. You get these uh, turntable cards. What this does essentially, it's like a reverse card in Uno. Um, if I play this, play if it was going clockwise, it then goes counterclockwise. Or if it was going counterclockwise, then it returns to clockwise. However, um, if I play this as my discard to turn the tables to have it go the other way, I get my turn over again. So I would take my turn, I could discard, and let's say we're going clockwise. I take my turn, I would discard this. Movement would now go counterclockwise, except I would get to take a second turn right away. And then you have wild card that substitutes for um, other cards. So if I was building an engine train and I had these two cards here, I could place this wild on here as a third card. 
you cannot go out unless all of your trains that you're building have at least three attached cards to your engine. So if I had two and I needed a third, I could play my WoW card as a third one. Additionally, for the industry cards, it could be used as a transition phase. So as I was saying, you can only build routes of the same type of car, not routes, but trains of the same type of car in it. Um, and the way it works is the first three, the value of the first three cards count as whatever this value is here. So this is a one value card. So these three cards combined equal one point. But for each additional card that is attached to my train, this is a standalone value of one point. So these three cards would be three points, four points, five points. So this train is worth five points. These three count as one, plus one more, plus one more. Likewise, if I was building up um, these tank cars, right? So I have two, if I had another, a third tank car, which I don't know that I have one available, but if I did, it would count as these three cards count as two points because they are combined in value. If I played a fourth tank or a card, it would just be an additional two points onto here. Which of course, there we are. So if this was my train at the end, these three cards would count as two points plus another two points. Each additional card is the value displayed on the card. If I ended my train with a WoW card, it would still be two points. This WoW card, it just substitutes as one of the three cards here, but like I said, the first three cards are only worth the value of the circle applied once for all three cards. By playing a WoW card here, I could transition. I could start building a different type of attachment, these hopper cars onto here if I wanted to, like this. And so these first three would count as a set of two points, but the additional cards, essentially your fourth card in on, it is the card is calculated individually. So these would be two points. If I use this as a transition card, this would be another two points plus another two points, plus another two points. Your first three cards are a lot, one score applying to the lot. Your fourth card scores individually as does fifth, sixth, seventh, or however many cards you put on your train. To go out in the game, you need to have at least one train of five cards and one train of four cards to go out. All of your other trains, if you're building another train, if I was building um, this train here, these tank cards, additionally, this would have to be completed before I could go out. So even though I meet the five card and the four card requirement, I would need to get a third tank card or a another wild card to place on here. You have to have complete trains to go out. Uh, so there's that. You have these cards that you get, which are attack cards. You have a steel card, which allows you to steal the last card in someone's line. So if someone was building a line and I wanted one of their tank cards, I could steal it. Place a steel card, and I would be able to take this and put it into my train. So if you saw that someone was going to go out, and they had, you know, a row of four cards and a row of five cards, like this train here. And let's say they had a four row up here and the game hadn't ended yet, I could play a steel card to steal this from them, reducing their train length so that they can't go out. You have a switch engine card, and this is the card that makes me assume that if you play your diesel card um, 
Um, if you replace one of your engine cards with a diesel card, this is why I am assuming it goes back into your hand because you're able to switch the locomotive engines. So I could take one of my, if I had a train like this going, I could play my switch card and get rid of whatever this card is. Let's say it's a, let's say I had chosen a coal card to be my engine card. And I have no use for it. I could switch it with another player. I don't know what their card is though, uh, but I could give this to another player and then I would take from them their engine and I could place it here. And maybe at some point I would want this card. I don't really see the value in it. The only way, time I see a value in it really is if you're scoring the passenger cards because since having a diesel, at the front, a diesel engine at the front of your passenger cards scores you double points, and I don't know what I did with my diesel. There it is. So if I had, I don't know, because you have to score, I, I really, I'm really confused on the purpose of this card, because um, I believe you need, you can only switch like locomotives. I couldn't switch this with a diesel, I don't think. I don't know. I don't see the point of this card. Somebody can tell me what the point of it is. Um, all right, other cards you can have are derailment cards. So with the derailment, um, the player, what is it? Oh, okay, derailment is if you play this on somebody, they lose their next turn. So it's like a skip card in Uno. Uh, a wreck card, uh, you are able to remove an entire train that somebody has built. Um, so if you're trying to get rid of somebody who has a long train, you can play this card on them to destroy it. Um, and then the broken car is, I guess it just destroys the last card on any train. So you just remove it. So unlike the steel card where you'd be able to steal the last card and put it onto your train, this one just destroys the last one. Now if you have a caboose at the back of your train, you can't apply these cards to it. The other set of cards you get are these uh, special repair cards. They each have a symbol in the bottom right corner that corresponds with a disaster card. So for example, this here, the heavy crane, if someone played this wreck card on you, if this card was in your hand, you could play it so that this doesn't apply to you and then this card has to be played attached to one of the trains that you're building. Or at some point in the game, you can just play this face up in front of you, it's worth five points. But if someone plays the wreck card, they're able to destroy that card. So it can protect you. If someone, it can also discourage somebody from playing a wreck card on me. If somebody wants to really wreck somebody's train and they see that I have this card, maybe they won't play it on me because they know that I would be able to stop you from wrecking my train. Additionally, they might play it on me so that I don't get those five points. If I hold it in my hand, it limits my hand length, but I can use it as a defensive move in case somebody does play a rec card, because if they do play a rec card, I'm able to play this. The rec card goes away, and I'm able to keep this card in play. Uh, you have the light crane, which stops the broken card. So if someone plays a broken card on you, this stops that effect. You have the transfer card, which prevents the switch engine card from being played on you. Again, I don't know what the point of that card is. I haven't made sense of it. The office allows uh, you to stop, sorry, stop someone from stealing the card from you. And here you have the boom card, which um, stops the, what is this, the derailment, so you don't lose your turn. So again, these have point values that they're played in front of you, stop those bad cards. All these cards are shuffled up. The only other thing I would say is when you're scoring your passenger train, if you choose to make one, there are bonuses you can earn.
by scoring your passenger train. And let me uh, look at the book because I don't know these by memory. All right, so if you have your train in a certain order. So if I have it going with a mail card, followed by the coach card, followed by the dome card, followed by the sleeper card, followed by the observation card. If I have my train in this order, I will score double points. So one, two, three, four, five times two is 10 points. Also for having one of each card in my train, I score double points. So if it was out of some other different order, right? I would score, for having one of each, I would score double. For having one of each and in a specific order, I score a second double. So that'd be my score times four. If I'm able to replace this engine with a diesel, that is another doubler. So my score times six. Uh, what's the other one? Six or more. Oh, and then if it's six or more cards in length, including wild cards, that would be another doubler. So if I had a diesel card, I had it in the specific order, which is mailbag, coach, dome, sleeper, observation. I have one of each card times two in that specific order. Now it's times four. With a diesel, now it's times six. With a six or more cards, now it's times eight. It's my score times eight. And I could keep adding other cards to this to increase the length and the point value because they're each worth one point. All right, so that's all the cards. So essentially, you take all these cards and you shuffle them up, and then you're going to deal each player a hand. Uh, if you're playing in partners, you deal each person eight cards. If you are playing solo, you deal each person... 10 cards, I think, what's that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 cards. At the end of your turn, you cannot have more than 5 cards in your hand, 5 or less. You can have 0, I believe, because it doesn't say you can't, um, but having 0 cards in your hand would prevent you from being able to take from the discard pile, because you always have to discard a card. So if this was my choice and I had no cards, all right, I could either take two cards, because on your turn you always draw two cards from the unknown and add it to your hand, or you take a card from the discard pile. But essentially, if you take a card from the discard, you always have to discard, so if I took a card from the discard pile, I would just have to put it right back. So it's essentially a skip. So on my turn, I would look at my cards and I might go organize them by suit type and try and figure out what I want to build. And these are all individuals. So I'm gonna draw two cards. And so maybe I look at my cards and I go, okay, I could build a four, I could build a four coal card right here. So maybe this one box card, it's only worth one point. I don't have a set or anything, so maybe I play this down as my locomotive engine. And then I play these cards down like this. And so that is three points, plus another three is six points right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I have more cards, so I still have to play. So maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe I put down this card has another engine, and maybe I play my two green cards, building up that train. I have four cards in my hand. I have to discard something. These two are set. This is a high-value card. This I could use for the commuter passenger bonus. Do I want to try and go for that? I don't know. Let's just say I discard that, and then it goes to the next player's turn in clockwise order, which would be this person. So they would look at their cards. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Draw two. They could take this card, or they could draw two. They have a dome and a coach. We'll just take two. 
All right, so they do two of these. So they have a derailment card. So that is, um, but that's the one that skips your turn. Let me look real quick. That is the, yes, that's the one that skips your turn. So they could play this. They could, this could be their last card that they play as a discard and skip any of the other players' turns if they want. Uh, so for the passenger bonus, you want it to go coach and then dome. So I actually could start it, start it, and I have the first two that I needed. Now, had I drawn this card instead, I could actually go coach, coach, dome, and it still could get me that special order bonus uh, because the coach cards are together. Like I could go coach, coach, dome, 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 as long as I keep it in order. Once I play a sleeper car onto the train, I couldn't play another dome or coach if I wanted to keep it in that order. So for this player, all right, this one prevents the uh, switch engine card playing. So if I wanted to, you know, I could play this out in front of me for five points. So let's just get rid of this other player. So, you know, maybe I go five, put that out there as a protection plus five points. Uh, maybe I don't care about skipping somebody. So I'm going to place that there. And maybe I'm gonna build up my pink line. The three cards. And one, two, three, four, five, six. I have to discard one. If I discard one, I would still have these cards in my hand. So maybe I will, I don't know, maybe I'll build, start building up the uh, commuter line. Oh no, it needs a mailbag in the front. So do I hold on to these? Maybe I play these. And maybe I would just discard this card and I have three left over and then it would be the next player's turn. So then they look at their hand. They're going to draw two cards. So they got that black one, that black one. They have the reverse turn order card. Green, green. Those, those are all singles. So, I mean, essentially, if this person wanted to, they could go, uh, well, I'll play, you know, like this down as my engine card. I'll play these two to start building up that line. I could play this down as an engine card. I could play these three down to get a three scoring train. And then maybe I reverse turn order, which means I get to go again. So I draw two cards. I look at what I got. I don't know. I could one, two, three, four, five, six, three. I have six cards. Maybe I just get rid of this one, hold on to these five, and it goes to the next player's turn. And it just keeps going like that. You're trying to build these sets. So the ending conditions, like I said, are you have to have one train of five cards, one train of four cards. Any other lines that you're building have to be completed. What else do you need? 105, 104, all players' melds must be scoring melds. The player must dis, you have to be able to discard. You can't have any cards in your hand and you have to be able to discard. Uh, so no cards remaining, the player goes out, hand immediately, the game immediately ends. So I don't know, hopefully that's some understanding of how the game kind of works. Uh, it's essentially a very large glorified Uno with all sorts of other types of factors playing into it. And that is Express the Railroad Card Game.